Hi, thank you so much for joining me. Now that you've watched the video and you've become cause and effect rock stars, you're ready to apply what you've learned. And you're gonna do that using the article, Don't Blame the Rats for Spreading the Black Death by Bethany Brookshire. So before you actually get into reading the article, there is a before reading section. It says, describe a time that you or a friend were blamed for something that you didn't do. How did you or the friend overcome the situation what were some effects of these actions? So when I think about a time where I was blamed for something I didn't do, it involves my younger sister. So one time when I was younger, I was blamed for breaking my grandma's ceramic tea set. Because it was my job to empty the dishwasher and put the clean dishes away, she assumed I did it, but really it was my younger sister. So I'm sure those of you out there who have younger siblings, you completely understand and you can sympathize with me um, and feel my plight. Those younger siblings are always getting us older siblings in trouble. My younger sister had decided that she wanted to have a tea party with her Barbies, Care Bears, and Cabbage Patch Kids. After she was finished and tried to put the tea set back, it slipped out of her hand and hit the floor with a loud crack. I was in the kitchen emptying the dishwasher, so I decided to help. I grabbed a broom and dustpan and began sweeping up the shattered pieces of porcelain. My sister's eyes filled with water and she ran off. Before I could get the shards in the trash, my grandma walked in and began to yell. That tea set was special to her. Her mom passed it down to her and she intended to pass it on to my mom eventually. And I'm sure eventually um, it would have gotten passed on to me. She was so angry. I couldn't get a word in to try to clear my good name. Um, to her, I was just guilty. As upset as I was with my grandma for blaming me, I had to overcome it and get on with my life. I mean, let's face it, everybody loves grandma, so you can't be mad at grandma for long. However, my sister was not that lucky. I ignored her for a whole week, pretending she was invisible. She eventually started crying and saying how sorry she was. I have to admit, her tears provided me with some, uh, just a little retribution, and I was able to forgive her and move on. So I want you to go ahead and complete the before reading section, and then after you complete that, you're ready to move on down to the during reading. So don't blame the rats for spreading the Black Death. And before we get started, I actually like to go down and read the questions and see what's going to be expected of me. So the first question on this document says, explain where the bacteria that caused the Black Death lives. Highlight your evidence above. Okay, so let's take a look at the article. The Black Death was one of the worst disease outbreaks in human history. This bacterial disease swept across Europe from 1346 to 1353, killing millions. For hundreds of years afterward, this plague returned. Each time it risked wiping out families and towns. Many people thought rats were to blame. After all, their fleas can harbor the plague microbes. But a new study suggests researchers have given those rats too much blame. Human fleas, not rat fleas, may be most to blame for the Black Death. Black Death was an especially extreme outbreak of bubonic plague. Bacteria known as Yersinia pestis caused this disease. When these bacteria are not infecting people, they hang out in rodents such as rats, prairie dogs, and ground squirrels. Many rodents can become infected, explains Catherine Dean. She studies ecology, or how organisms relate to one another at the University of Oslo in Norway. The plague species persist mostly because the rodents don't get sick, she explains. These animals can form a reservoir for the plague. They serve as hosts in which these germs can survive. So it wants us to highlight the evidence that explains where the bacteria that caused the Black Death lives. So let's go ahead and go back up and take a look at our article. Now, some people may choose to reread it, and if you choose to reread it, that's perfectly fine. Um, I just go ahead and go through and skim it. So when I look at the first paragraph, it mainly talks about how horrible the, di the disease was and um, how rats may not be mostly to blame. 
When I go to the second paragraph, it talks about how it was a part of the bubonic plague. And when I get to the third paragraph, that one tells us the name of the bacteria, which is Yersinia pestis. And it says, when these bacteria are not infecting people, they hang out in rodents such as rats, prairie dogs, and ground squirrels. So we have our answer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight because it wants us to highlight our evidence. And I like to use yellow when I'm highlighting, but you can use whatever color you'd like. So now that we have our evidence, we're ready to go back to the text box and answer the question. All right, so we wanna know where the bacteria that caused the Black Death lives. So we wanna go ahead and name the bacteria. The article told us that it is Yersinia pestis. And we wanna make sure that our reader knows that it's the bacteria that caused the Black Death. Okay, and it wants to know where this lives and it lives in rodents. And I'm sorry, you guys have to see my horrible typing skills such as rats, um, prairie dogs, and ground squirrels. Okay, and there we have our answer. So Yersinia pestis, the bacteria that caused the Black Death, lives in rodents such as rats, prairie dogs, and ground squirrels. So I hope this helps to get you started on the activity. So go ahead and access the document and you have um, the first one we did together. So you can go ahead and just transfer that information onto your document and then read the remaining portions of the article and answer the questions. If you still have questions on how to complete this assignment, please be sure to join our Google Meet. I'll be putting the information on our Schoology page. And you know you can also reach me by email and there's a parking lot for this week's emergency lesson plan where you can go ahead and put your questions as well. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you at our Google Meet. Have a great day.